Well, hello, it is Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature, if you don't know me. And I want to continue the conversation today that has been the theme through Mental Health Day and also how to heal our mother wound, uh, which was our theme for May. And a lot of you have asked, you know, how can you do this in a, a more holistic way? And I love the quote by Zen master Suzuki Roshi, who says that the that Zen-like state of peace and calm is like feeling your way through the dark. And I really believe that that, that is the the opportunity that life really gives us to, to really grow and expand and find our gifts in the dark, uh, where we all really emit our own frequency. Um, so does it make sense that if you adjust your expectation and your frequency, if you raise your frequency, your cellular blueprint up to its encoded state of what you came in here, uh, to experience in this lifetime that the universe will support you in illuminating that frequency and, and bounce it back at you uh, to really meet you where you are and give you this beautiful opportunity to relate to your world and what you want to see in it by, by going out there, actively participating in your life and seeking out evidence of your life-affirming expression not what's against you. Hi, Anjana. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you here. So we're speaking to the death mother today as part of the series that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks on healing the mother wound and, and growing our, our child parts up from a space that's on the other side of the shame, the blame, the regret, the guilt, um, and this great separation sickness that we're all healing healing from in our own way and doing the best that we can always with what we have because that really is the root of my work is helping sensitive, kind women like you to heal from, from unresolved trauma that is often, not always, but often rooted in uh, the mother, father, primary caregiver relationship wound um, and to get you out of the cycle of, of shame and self-blame and toxic self-abuse and judgment and not enoughness uh, so that you can do the necessary grieving and do the soul retrieval work and do the somatic release on a body level uh, to finally return to trust and, and claim the power and the potential of you. You are a miracle. And uh, today's my mother's birthday. So I really am deepening into um, such deep appreciation for my mother and her resilience and what she's taught me about to be, about how to be a fierce, independent woman and love myself through, through the challenges. She's done that many, many times. And I've seen her in places that, that oftentimes broke my heart, um, where I wanted to save her from herself and, and how life really does meet us there. And I don't have my mic plugged in today. Uh, so just give me a yes in the comments if you can hear me all right. And I'm going to just dive into, into the content of what I wanted to, to, to share from a different type of perspective on, on remothering or reparenting yourself. Because part of my trust process that I share is really about looking at what we can do as, as human beings. Um, that are here in this multi-sensory, organic, all-feeling, all-knowing, beautiful physical bodies and very intelligent minds that often trip us up in and back into this addiction to please and this addiction to be more than we are or somewhere where we're not. Um, and and to, to really reach for joy without the resistance but more with a presencing of, of being wholly connected into the now and, and be there with our bodies, not to abandon ourselves again, which often happens when we're in shock and trauma. Um, you know, the waiting room is there uh, to really express and sit with grief and that deep existential longing, that belonging, that wanting to belong to not only ourselves but to a community of like-minded people that see us and celebrate and grow with us so that you can initiate 
your own expression of frequency in the freedom and the creativity of, of really enjoying your, your life and also contributing back to life. You know, as much as life gives to us, we're giving to life all the time. So we don't want to stay in the waiting room too long. A lot of people keep asking me what, you know, what, what is the, the waiting room? And I explain that in other videos. And, um, if you didn't catch my, my interview on, I think it was Tuesday early morning. I think we finished at one thirty in the morning around how animals show us how to, how to hold ourselves through challenges. Please go and look, listen to that on the transformational summit with Derva. It was a great, great, um, conversation and, and uh, we went in a lot of different places. So let me know, um, if you saw that, what your insights were, if you have any questions and just, just remember it too, you know, bringing in my mother energy. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things that always play. One is, is the absolute appreciation that I have my mother in my life that my grand, my child has, has got to know and learn how to be a full rounded woman from my mom. And also the fragility of that, you know, she's 83. And even though she's still doing ballet and still very active in her church and, and has a full life, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to get through that period of when my mother passes and and so often I want to avoid it and not look at it which is why I wanted to speak to the death mother archetype today because so many of us are, have watched our own mothers and grandmothers get so depleted and deprived on on so many levels uh, physically and in how they can create and express their lives and and also in the spaces of giving over to guilt or shame that they haven't done a lot enough or in my mother's case, staying in relationships that were abusive longer than they needed to for the sake of the children, which we now know is not, not a kindness. Um, but, but the programming is there and it's so minimized, uh, the great responsibility of, of being a mother, even if it's not to your own children, um, that there's a lot of, um, confusion on what mothering really is and how how we can give that to ourselves when when we've never been perhaps received and I talk about that as the collective we because there's a lot of taboo uh, around this mother wound um, that that's really delayed this process of, of healing women individually and also the collective feminine which we're seeing now coming up as in the rising of the the phoenix out the ashes in the me too movement which I prefer to call the we too movement because as one woman holds herself in that courageous place and is brave enough to actually do her own inner work. We're all, we're all receiving that and healing the parts of us that, that need to be healed. And I often find that we're called to the work that we need to do in our own ask to heal that part. Hi, Jenny. So, you know, if this is you or if you've ever kind of been in that place where you wonder what it's all about to be a woman, to to be a mother, to be in the feminine, or if you had a mother or a grandmother or a primary caregiver that maybe wasn't your your, your blood mother, uh, an aunt or a mentor or a teacher at school that really encompassed that that beautiful feeling of, of a mother that can nurture or the other extreme where perhaps you had, and I can think of one of my teachers in, in high school who who really hurt because she was hurting. Uh, and I never understood that then until I actually wrote her a letter 20 years later and, and, and resolved that piece where she deeply hurt me um, because she also, as a mother, had been deeply deprived um, in her own wants and her own desires. And... And was also unbeknown to me doing the best she can, could as a single mother, um, where she was really struggling to just hold, hold herself together to, to do the best for her children and, and her family. And yet she had no valid place to process her own feelings. And I see this so often with women that come into my practice, um, where they're, they're, they're still perpetuating this ancestral or familial or cultural trauma, the things they've inherited that they, that they have taken on to heal. And I see it everywhere. Um, 
you know, whether people are going through living through an actual war or a fragmentation of of loss in their community or in their country of origin, and also the impact of PTSD, uh, not just of people that, that have been to war, so the big traumas, but that in South Africa it's epidemic, the amount of 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 people that are actually walking around completely numbed out or hypervigilant all the time because they're not feeling safe in their homes or in, in, in their country. So, you know, just know that if you can relate to this, there's always a degree of soul loss, um, especially if you were raised by a mother who put her needs aside to, to make sure that you were provided for. Um, you know, and I'm talking about basics, that bottom rung of Maslow's hierarchy of uh, a roof over their heads and, and, and food in their stomachs and clothes and shoes on their feet. And, you know, really, really surviving. Um, when you're stuck in that lower rung of Maslow's theory, you can't move to the next rung where you actually start to imbibe and invite in creativity and play and, and aspects of, of experimentation that actually grow you. You just can't. And and most of the mothers that are, are there in that very extreme form, and of course they're going to create coping mechanisms to make sure that 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 nothing diverts them from the task at home. And you know, my mom uh, lost her mother at the tender age of 15 or 16 uh, when she actually saw her mother die in front of her on in a horrendous car accident. Um, so, you know, for her, she had to really find a way with the help of her older sisters to grow herself up as best she could without the guidance of, of a loving mother to show her how to do things. Um, you know, it's never easy, but, but it is possible. So how that sort of transferred in my mother's life is I, I witnessed a mother that was highly independent, um, always busy with something, very emotionally withdrawn, somewhat ambivalent, um, but extremely self-sufficient, never relying on anybody to do anything. I mean, she she knew how to do it all, and I'm so grateful uh, that that I that I'm I can change light bulbs and drill holes and make things and hammer and fix. And, and grow plants. And I learned a lot from her, um, about how, how, how to take care of myself. But on the other side of that, not as a wrongness, but the contrast of that is that it does cause us when we are not able to receive help from other people to, to say, I'm fine when we're not and, and, and protect that, uh, that sort of isolated space of being totally self-sufficient and independent um, that, that causes us the most trouble when we're wanting to belong. Um, and oftentimes we separate into an overachieving perfectionistic or reductionistic point of view about what we're supposed to be be here. So if you you had a mother or you know somebody that, that is a mother, um, this type of, of woman that did her best from a place of unresolved trauma, like my mother did, mother did. I mean, in those days, they, they wasn't help. People didn't talk about things like this openly. And they certainly didn't talk about um, um, mental health in the way that I, I can now say. My father was a second-generation alcoholic as the addiction to unresolved trauma along his ancestral line. He was embarrassed and ashamed of his, his family, especially his mother and his father, and the fact that they were pretty much on the borderline of, of poverty, um, and he was ashamed of them. So, you know, this deprivation goes quite deep, and in the process of, it, of, of just getting by and just making it to the next day, um, if, if, if your children or, or this woman, and I'm using this again as a generic, um, didn't know how to be safe with any kind of joy because she never knew it, um, this is going to trigger a lot of unprocessed pain and unconscious rage in a lot of times about the losses that they've incurred and not processed on a subconscious level. So if you, you know, you kind of were too joyful or too happy or too, you know, too, too, just too in, in, in engaged in, in happiness, 
a lot of these kind of women will turn around and be say hurtful things or do something to shut it down because that makes them feel very unsafe. And um, there's a book that that explains this archetypal energy, and I can't remember what it what it was called, but they talk about the death mother as this energy of toxic patriarchy in the mother line. So this is a, again a long the ancestral or familial line on the mother's side. And we address this in Parama Body Talk where we look at matrices in family dynamics where we can trace back on the epigenetic line in the person that we're working on to the great, great, great grandmother's mother on the father's side, for example, and then work it back so that we can either sever or or form tentacles along the familial constellation that need to be, you know, formed or severed or repaired or shaved in some cases to to create a more holistic uh, way of being for the person that, that that's comes into sessions. And I know that sounds a little bit out there, but just for now, as we try and keep to the subject of the death mother archetype, if our mothers, does it make sense? And give me a yes if this makes sense. If your mother or um, a mother that you knew embodied that archetypal death mother energy where they were literally killing themselves just to keep their family alive, and, and I'm talking extreme cases here that, that can show up as very subtle because they look so competent and they look like they're handling it all, but inside they're just dying inside, slowly, slowly, one little piece at a time. And it results in a very distorted template for, for their relationships to themselves. So what we what we we start to learn in that sort of situation is that you you feel safe in situations that emphasize um, or reward overwork or uh, martyrdom energy or um, self sacrificing energies where overwhelm or overindulgence or a very deep mistrust of themselves, all right, or ourselves, including distrust of of how you're feeling. Um, in any given moment. So your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, how you're feeling in your body, how you're feeling about your physical body, um, how you're feeling on a mental or an emotional level um, in, in getting your needs to be seen or acknowledged or understood out there. It, 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 it almost shuts people down. Um, I see this time and time again. It sort of goes into that free state and, you know, the good news again on all of this is with neuroplasty and the work that we can do with the nervous system and the brain, uh, it's totally possible to get back to true belonging, belonging to yourself in a way that you can be kind and gentle and patient and all the things a mother and nurturing, secure, um, grounded mother that really has a strong sense of her identity and her ability to know her no and her yes is so important. So just know that you can get there with the right kind of support. And, and I'd love to, to be there to support you for that. Um, so if any of this, oh, good, Jenny, I'm glad. And hear the birds again. Yep, it's sun. When the sun starts going down here, the Heidi does go off to nest and they, and they make this beautiful bird song. So, um, those of you that know me, thank you for staying with me. You know that I don't, I, I find it quite difficult to keep anything short as an auditory and a verbal processor. So I appreciate you staying for, for my, my little musings and, um, shared exploration into, into our, into our psyche. So yeah, this death mother, um, I, I get that the, that the archetype of the death mother is the mother that's willing to, to literally give herself up and die, whether that's on an emotional or mental or spiritual or a physical level. It's this inner war, this raging inside that we often inherit. It's a war between our perception of what's normal and our intuitive natural instincts of the true nature that you know in your deep down. And and it's also that traumatized coping mechanism. So all the addictions that we take on 
as part of our familial legacy. And they might be really quiet, um, all of that, or it could be really, really loud. It could be pain screaming at you and fibromyalgia, which I see a lot of in, in my Jewish clients as, um, as an ancestral inheritance to, to take on, on the, the guilt and the pain of, uh, Auschwitz, um, during, uh, the Nazi Second World War. So depending on how severe your your mother or your grandmother's mother wounds are or were, um, it can show up like <clears throat> depression or disconnection or, as I said, avoidance or ambivalence as a style as a style attachment, and and that can look like child abuse because it's neglect, neglectful, and it's not that they mean to; they just don't know anything different. And in very extreme cases, the mother may be very invasive or emotionally um, abusive when they're where they're lashing out, um, where they have uncontrolled abuse of anger or rage, seething, that sort of seething energy where it's very defensive and very attacking. So the, the deaf mother's core message, just in closing here, um, thank you for all the comments. Um, if you were listening to this on the replay and um, you have a question, I will go back and answer all of these. And please let me know if these are our, our contribution to your life or and if you if you like what you're hearing even though it's uncomfortable it's not the lightest of, of topics it's so necessary for us to do this work and to speak about the unspeakable because unless we acknowledge that it's even there we can't start to heal it I always say you can't heal unless you're willing to feel so that's really the deaf mother's core message to the daughter um, energy is don't don't get too too tall. You know, tall poppies get cut down. You need to stay small. Um, you need to serve over um, your own desires. Otherwise, you're going to you know there's going to be a, a, um, you're going to lose something. There'll be a um, consequence if you don't. Um, it'll be to your detriment. So it's always around loss, and it's always a, around um, unexpressed grief. Because you're not allowed to ask for what you want. Uh, and if you do, then you must feel very, very guilty or very, very ashamed or um, think of yourself as incredibly selfish or self-serving. So you learn very early on in this sort of environment to suppress your feelings and move on. And, you know, time doesn't heal, it conceals. And when you start pushing anything down, anger turned inward becomes the heart attack. It becomes, in you know, in chronic cases, a, a huge shock and trauma that will literally paralyze you so that your mind, your body follows your mind. So if your mind is, is, is feeling like it's being killed a little bit every single day, your body will we'll give you exactly what you're asking for. And this is why I always say if you can raise your vibrational frequency up to what you want and, and what you envision and see your life as in the imagination, this is where um, guided activations and meditations are so powerful because the brain and the nervous system doesn't know the difference a lot of the time too between fear and excitement, the kidneys that the energy, that frequency, the in, is is the same thing. So we have to do the inner work and look at what is what is a real fear and what is irrational fear, and always aim for what is in the highest, greatest good of getting me to this place where I'm no longer affected by past trauma and abuse or the old story. Right when you kill the old story, your nervous system thinks you're going to kill it. So it does everything it possibly can to keep you with what you know, even if it's not good for you. And this is where I come in and I help my clients to really start to recover and rewrite that story in a healthy way so that your body can be in a new position and you start showing up differently and people start to be attracted to that energy rather than repressed from something that doesn't feel intrinsically or intuitively um, attractive. So, you know, you can't, you can suppress and suppress and suppress, but eventually it's, you're going to explode. And that's something that I knew very, very well.
um, until I knew how to work through it, um, to change these limiting messages and beliefs and lies and stop seeking evidence against myself and start looking for evidence for myself, to start looking for the miracles. So acknowledging the, the, the mother's shadow, especially the death archetype, is going to liberate you in, in shining light into that darkness and giving it a voice to say, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, anger, I'm so sorry, grief, I'm so sorry, fear. And being able to sit with it, it stops pushing the it stops pushing back. And I'm not saying it never goes away, but it it doesn't have you don't have to stay in that waiting room longer than you need to. And many relationships are are largely based on on a transaction, not love based on how we've been grown up. Um, especially women with, with men. I'm seeing more cancer, uh, breast cancers in men than ever before, more diabetes, more pancreatic um, imbalances in, in men because for them a lot of men were grown by their mothers to see love as a place of reward only when they're doing. So when men of mothers that, that are very much in that sort of narcissistic and codependent relationship, we're rewarded for doing as a way of feeling loved. And we need to rewrite all of this. And, and, and as the, as the feminine that hold, you know, we're the vessel that holds the light in Kabbalah. The light is the masculine. The feminine is the vessel that holds it without the vessel, the container holding that. This is where we get diluted. This is the soul loss. That happens. This is the fragmentation where we lose parts and pieces of ourselves. And it's time to bring them back and have a different language with this. So if your mother was deprived of, of her own source of emotional nourishment, does it make sense that, that, that those kind of mothers will always see their daughter's boundaries as an attack? And typically they'll respond with, you know, the, the silent treatment or a, a hurtful response that pulls you back into that distraction of blame or shame. Um, when you end up doing it against your every sort of fiber of being saying no. So it's important to have really strong, flexible boundaries when you start working with this energy. And I'd love to help you with that um, if you don't know where to start. So, uh, you know, you can heal from this. Um, and it depends, you know, what your style attachment is based on how you were grown and 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 getting curious about that you know really go into that and i'm going to be doing a another a series of free webinars um that will have an opt-in opt-in in it to go through the secure attachment styles and the languaging to use in in your deal and deliver in relationship with that um because we have to reclaim all of us we have to reclaim our own inner brokenness in a, in a in a new way you know you there's nothing to fix because you're not really broken but there are fragmented parts that need to come back in a new way that affirms the mother within yourself we can't we can't go back to that sort of sugar sweet platitudes or that um surface sentiment of of mothers um, and we need, you need to really re recognize too that in, in doing this work, you're not, it's not that you're, you're abandoning the mother either that you had, or, um, it's not that you don't love them. Of course, you still love them. It's not about them. It's about you. And you really need to, to remember that. Um, I always say you, you, you're forgiving the person. You don't have to forgive the behavior. Um, and the sooner that we start speaking to the truth, of all of this with with a very compassionate inquiry and a very fertile listening place the sooner we we're, we're going to move to a world where love and kindness honor that each and every one of us matter and to meet ourselves from a space of what 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 would love do that we 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 become more confident we we start to truly belong to to that in a loving kind way to ourselves and then we start to attract that resonance frequency of people that are are ready to meet you and grow with you so you know can you be the mother that you've been waiting for and trust that it's all in you what would you need to let go of to really really trust yourself 
with yourself first and then with others. So that's really a question I, I want to leave you with today is if you are a woman or a man who's, who's listening to this and you're consciously mothering yourself, please take time today to celebrate and affirm how your own inner mothering is, is not just liberating and setting you free, but it's stopping that ancestral abuse, that familial abuse, so that your parents, your children and your children's children don't have to keep continuing that, that old legacy. Um, it takes bravery, yes. It takes responsibility. Are we, do we always get it right? No. I screw up all the time with my daughter. But I, I accept that and, and I am so grateful that I have a growth partner like her that calls me on that, that she literally mirrors back when I am a sort of vibrating on a lower vibrational frequency and together we get to lift it up. And, and that's what this, this tribe is about too. Um, that you have eyes on you to remind you who you are in your highest vibrational state of light as a lighthouse to celebrate your commitments to this journey. You know, I'm so grateful that you're here doing this with me because it's important to remember, yes, your mother gave you life and you have a right to your feelings about the dynamics of that relationship especially if you if you're a woman that's suffered deeply from trauma or abuse or neglect or even betrayal by your mother's children um oftentimes in sexual abuse mothers are aware that the daughters were being um you know abused and yet they stood by and did nothing and that brings up a lot of hurt um later on and and you can heal from that so the point is to honor that that you know everything is both sides, everything in between is true. Yes, your mother gave birth to you and your feelings are valid. You shouldn't have to suppress your truth in order to be considered a good daughter, all right, or a good sister or a good mother. And it's really my belief that part of stepping into our full divine feminine power is to step into that role of the inner mother for ourselves, to put on the archetype of the death mother, but also the birth mother in, in that, in the contrast, and to, to hold that space for the men that need to heal, you know, because that's what we're here to do is to hold the light. And it's an empowering process when you start to take responsibility um, for yourself and belong to yourself, to be sovereign to yourself. And it's going to lessen your attachment to any of that sort of toxic pattern or addiction that you have with your mother, whether she's living or past. That energy in the in the birth of axis, it connects us to the place of our birth at all, and it connects us to to our family of origin too. So oftentimes, when I see people that cut um, family members out, I did that with my own father. A lot of time, you get, you get sick. Because you have to have that vivaxis. You need that connection. Um, and then you can start working with it. You can't do it when you, you have sort of disavowed or disowned your, your parents or any, any member of your family. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, just a question to leave you with today is just ask yourself, how can, how can I embody an unconditionally loving mother energy to my own inner I don't even like to use the word inner because it's you. It's you, the child that's, that's trapped in certain events in time. Um, but how can you, how can you unconditionally love? And it's not easy, right? Because we, we're taught that love is conditional. Um, it's a transaction rather than a feeling. So just remember, it's your job to take care of you and, and it's your job to retrieve your, your child parts as the secure adult, as the secure mother, father energy along, along your timeline. And as harsh as it may seem, nobody's coming to rescue or save you, right? Or mother you the way that you want. So the sooner that you can acknowledge that and not fill the void with another kind of addiction, the, the sooner you can take responsibility for that. And it may be completely true that someone else or perhaps your mother or your lover or another person betrayed you or that you have unfinished soul contracts with. It's okay. 
you know, um, it's not okay that they're consistently or systematically hurting you on an emotional, mental level or, or, a, a, um, or even a physical level. It's not okay that that happened. And I'm so sorry for that. But you need to apologize to the parts of you that you abandoned and call them home and know that it might take some time for your child parts to trust you again. But no, you're doing the best with what you had just as you did then and as your parents did then and as your mother did then, you're doing the best you can with what you had when you endured those challenges of abuse or betrayal or whatever it was for you. But it's your job now to take good care of yourself and trade gently as you start to rewrite and edit your Akashic Record. If you haven't done the guided Akashic Record edit, you'll find that over in my SoundCloud account. And I highly recommend that you give that to yourself this week. Because it's your job as the, as the adult to make sure that you are in, in creating your own safety, that you aren't putting yourself in dangerous situations. And if you're in a situation where you feel like this isn't going in a good direction or that your life or your children's life might be threatened, please reach out and get support. I know how tricky that can be, but there are great organizations and, and lifelines out there. You don't have to stay in that. It's your job to take care of you. Um, right now and if you need to leave find the people and organizations that can support you that you leave intact and safe because that is your right and it is also your birthright to be present and to be loving and the key the key point here is don't abandon abandon yourself take some time to explore what are some of the recurring patterns of your relationship with your mother that caused you to feel hurt or frustrated or anger, angry or sad. And if you need to swap that out with a father, father wound, do that too. If it's the mater, it's the, if it's your primary caregivers, do it together. But just remember, this isn't about blaming your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. This is about being real to yourself and taking personal responsibility for your thoughts, feelings and emotions and your attitudes and your beliefs in how you're not showing up and trusting in, in yourself or trusting in life or trusting in others. And it's not about that blame. It's about truth. It's what's true for you. What's true for you does not necessarily have to be true for anybody else. There's truth and there is the truth. And there's a whole nother video on that. Um, but, you know, you have the power of choice. So you're not alone, you're not crazy, and you're worth the time it takes to do this work because nothing else works until you do. And often we think that pain of emotional or physical or verbal or ancestral or inherited trauma is that this this other person or this, you know, where were you? Why did you abandon me? All of that dialogue is running all the time that you were hurt, that, that you were abandoned, that they someone did something to you. And that might be completely true for you. But a lot of your pain actually comes from the ways in which you've abandoned yourself, the way that you're maybe still telling the story. I always say to my clients, if you're still telling the story, there's a, if there's still a charge there, there's work to be done. Embrace it, rejoice, and then get the support you need to work through it, right? You cannot bypass this in any way, shape, or form. Otherwise, it comes back and it hits you again. That's how life works. Um, so everything is an op opportunity for you to reclaim yourself, come home to your heart, and really, really belong, your, belong to yourself and apologize. Feel the pain and then apologize. Say, I'm so sorry I left you here. We go through this in depth in the mindfulness change process um, because I know how tricky it is to to hold yourself in that space. You need accountability to do this work and you need a secure place to do this work. And I provide that for you. So if you're interested in knowing what that may look like, book a Skype call with me, a discovery call. I've opened up a few spots for the next week as my birthday week um, approaches. And as I said, if you're interested in learning more about this, the good news is you can repair your relationships with yourself. You can come into right relationship. You can move through trauma in a healthy way that brings you back into a holistic space of being the best version of yourself that you can be. Um, and, it, and you can learn to apply love to the parts of yourself that are hurt. Um, and you don't have to do it alone. 
So if you want more information on that, just drop me a PM or um, t post your insights in the, in the in the comments below. I'd love to know how this resonated with you and what else you'd like to know about uh, coming home to your heart, coming back to really belonging to yourself and doing the work that only you can do that you came here to do in this world. Um, there's no time to waste. All right. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. I send you lots of love and just remember power of choice is yours and yours alone. So let's do this work and let's, 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 let's go. Okay. Um, there's never been a better time. All right. Lots of love. Bye.